and get that going. Um, let's bring that up. So it's always the way you think you've got it going and then you have to click something. There we go. So I will also share the slides if you want to have access to these. I'll put the link to this in the chat. Um, but here we go. So four ways to get more visible. And actually, for the most part, ironically enough, I'm not going to be talking so much about uh, Canva, especially or branding and stuff. These are tips that I've used um, over the course of the last two, three years. Um, in addition to obviously social media and branding and all of that to get more visible. So these are easy to um, easy tips that you can implement and maybe you're doing already, um, but it can serve as a bit of a reminder and nudge of what to do. OK, so there's a few faces that I don't know very well or like new to me, um, but in terms of those people that I network with a regular on a regular basis and that are in my community, um, I'm really known for Canva. Uh, you know, I've been called uh, hashtag Canva girl, hashtag Canva queen, all of that. I mean, I am much more than that. You know, for me, I'm a branding and design expert first and foremost who happens to use Canva. But for me, I'm quite happy that if you remember one thing about me, it's Canva. Marie Louise and Canva, that's fine because I think it's a great hook. And it's led to me having some real opportunities to um, meet new people, get out there and being asked to do talks and so on. So for me, it's about it's that kind of perpetuating cycle of making sure that people link me with Canva um, and also, you know, getting that name and visibility out there. So how can you get more visible? So step one is, or, or it's not, not necessarily step one, but one option is um, articles. Um, so there's a lot of online publications, there's a lot of printed stuff, both uh, locally, it might be for your uh, specific um, industry, but getting out there and being, you know, taking part in that, um, whether it's a chapter in a book or uh, putting in an article um, to, to be there, there's nothing better than kind of going, hey, look, here is me in print. Um, and it's something that, you know, don't think that this is just open to um, journalists or people who are like brilliant at copywriting and all of that. You know, you as a small business could find lots of opportunities both locally and within your network. It's just about asking for it and um, seeing where the opportunities are to, uh, to be able to submit articles and get published, whether it's online or in print. So here are some tips. So if you're not a natural writer or you sort of struggle or, you know, when you're just getting started with um, creating articles, it might be worth working with a copywriter so you can outsource it. <laughs> you, know, you can still get the benefits of getting your article published, but you don't need to get bogged in, down with all the kind of the grammar and the English and does it flow. A really good copywriter will get your tone of voice and get the points across and take it off your, um, you know, off your to-do list. You can also write a press release. Um, there's some lots of great training and uh, there's some people that I know who teach about PR and writing press releases if you do want a connection. And by having a press release, it gives you something that you can hand over and uh, send into various publications. So it can be a specific story or more of a bit about you. Um, there can be different purposes behind that press release. Um, you might want to work with a PR professional. So I've used um, a PR uh, uh, service before, um, and that was what got me into this one here, uh, where it was, I was talking about um, when I rebranded from being called Lovely Designs to Lovely Evolution and sort of really talking about why that was for me you know <laughs> we kind of think oh you know why why would anyone care about what i'm doing or you know who 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 cares kind of thing so by being able to um work with a pr professional it meant that she was able to extract what i wanted to say in my head and why i thought branding evolution was important and i was 
practicing what I preach, um, it, I was able to get into some local publications. Um, you know, it's just great. It's you know something you can then obviously put on social media and go look at me, um, and it just spreads that word. You can also use Twitter and search uh, PR request um, and journal request using those hashtags. And you can also set Google alerts. So if you're not sure what to write about, um, it might be worth setting up Google alerts on specific topics and things that you could then um, add in your commentary on a specific topic or, you know, uh, write, you know, answer kind of question to something that often you're being asked um, that could really help other people. You could also write blogs. I mean, articles and blogs are a similar thing, um, but blogs can be another way that you can um, get on to uh, other people's audiences. So I've done a guest blog for another design designer that I've done some work with. So he really kindly said, oh, can you weigh in on about colors and Canva and stuff like that? So I did uh, supply that. Um, and I've written a few other blogs. I'm not a prolific blog writer and I keep, I've written my own blog years and years ago and I did struggle with it. It's not something that comes naturally to me, um, but it is something that I'd like to do more of and actually sort of start my own blog again, even if it's on a more ad hoc basis. But this blog could then be used as part of your newsletter. So whether you're distributing it out there or you're being a guest blogger, there's some really great um, exposure and uh, connections that you can make as, as a result. So here's some blog tips. So you might actually want to start with doing a video or a vlog, as it's sometimes called, um, because sometimes it's easier just to talk about what you want to um, share in terms of tips and things like that. Um, and rather than, you know, if you struggle with the kind of writing point of view, um, you might want to use a VA to help, um, try, you know, turn that vlog into a blog or if they're quite a good writer maybe they can write it on your behalf you know you give them some bullet points and some uh, kind of a bit of an outline of what you want to talk about again as long as they know your tone of voice you can of course use a copywriter as well there's lots of services that specifically uh, specialize with blog writing and there's lots of apps that you can use to transcribe that text. So if you go down the vlog route or talking into your phone or something um, and go through that kind of verbal route to getting your information out, there's lots of things that can translate that, that um, those words into the written word that you can then kind of zhuzh up and make into a semblance of sort of more of a flow uh, that uh, works with the blog. And actually, blogs don't have to be super duper long. We kind of think that, you know, it needs to be war and peace, but actually keeping it short and sweet can also work. And I kind of alluded to it or mentioned it before, but, you know, guest blog opportunities are great, particularly if you don't have your own blog um, and just ask about, put a post on LinkedIn, drop a message to people, ask and you will receive. And uh, the next one, number three, is talk. So that might be in person. It might be like this, you know, a bit of an inception moment, a talk within a talk. But doing, you know, there's lots of opportunities to do talks where you can share your expertise and give lots of value um, and build that relationship with people. Um, even when throughout lockdown, I was involved, I was invited to do um, a few sort of summits where I talked about Canva. I've also asked for opportunities of applied for things um, but you know your part for mums unlimited <laughs> soon to be rebranded uh, or is rebranded um, but you know use this opportunity ask the leaders that you're working you know that you know and say you know I'd really like to do a, a 10 minute talk um, can you you know what can you know ask for guidance as well if you're not sure what to talk about but try and stick it to being quite value driven rather than being a sales pitch um, and it's definitely the, the way I'm hoping to go forward is a bit more in the way of pay talks and paid opportunities. Um, and I'm starting to see them. I've had a few and they're coming up. Um, but even doing the free ones where there's a benefit to you, you getting in front of new people, um, it's just a really great way to raise your profile, be that expert. 
So here are my tips. Um, preparing a practice sounds obvious, but you know, if you're not a natural speaker, then you know, practice in front of the mirror, practice in front of people. Um, maybe have it as a um, you know, I've put the point at the bottom, but you know, have a keynote speech. So you don't necessarily have to have lots of different talks. Maybe you focus initially on having one talk that you do over and over again that covers the points that you want, that if you had to do it at the drop of the hat, you know, if you needed to step into someone's shoes, you could do it easily. Um, and the more you do it, the more you're gonna feel more comfortable doing it and kind of the smoother it goes, you can tweak it and improve it. I personally like using Canva for slides, it's obvious. <laughs> did have to mention Canva in the end. Um, but you know, whatever you're going to be using, try and make sure that your uh, slides do look professional. Um, only keep a few points, um, you know, on terms of on the slide. And you know, don't you don't need to try and get every single point and information that's in your head into that presentation you know there are some kind of rules of thumb as to um presentations and talks you know how to improve it um i think like there's a rule of three like three points that you might get across but the the gist of it is is that you don't want to have like you want to keep it to the point and I've mentioned it already, but, you know, don't be afraid to ask around for guest speaker opportunities. If it's something that you want to really, really encourage, maybe having a page on your website, which talks about the kind of talks that you can do um, so that you can send people to that page so that they might stumble across it themselves through SEO or they're searching. Um, but, you know, be prepared, you know, with um, things like having your your bio, your biography about who you are, what you do, your links that you can email out to people, and ideally also having a headshot so people, you know, the, the people who are doing the talk can uh, promote you. So those are my tips on the talks. And number four is interviews. And uh, Donna, you might reckon, recognize one of them. So I've been invited to be a guest uh, you know, interviewee on um, Donna's, I've been on Henriette's um, and lots of other places as well. And it's just fantastic because interviews are a really great way because you're not necessarily there presenting, you're not being on, it's just a chat. Um, so that could be a podcast, it could be on, um, you know, I've done a couple of that have been through Instagram. That was a bit weird for me, but managed to do that a couple of times. Um, you know, it can then go on um, YouTube, shared on various social media channels. But it's just, again, it's a great way of just having a bit of a chit chat. Um, it's worth maybe having a few, few points prepared. But generally, if you've got a good interview, uh, Think, and then you're the interviewee um, they will lead the conversation so it will keep going so you know you don't need to feel like you have to fill the space and you know like remember to breathe and all of that but um it's just it can be a really informal way and it can also be quite a nice way of um if you wanting to do more video content, if you do interviews and interview other people, you can put the emphasis on other people. And it's that win-win of um, really helping support people in your network and showcasing other experts. Um, they're just a really nice thing to do um, and just fun to be in and part of. So why would you want to do all of these things? Like why be visible at all or do all these talks and things? And the key thing for me is that it's really a good way of sharing your knowledge. If you can get that information, you know, it feels good to give, you know, we're all like, you know, from what I can see of like chatting earlier, we're all lovely people, we're here to help people. And um, doing guest talks, you know, doing blogs and all these things, we're sharing that knowledge, we're giving that. But also it's a great way of becoming known as that expert. So what what do you want to be known for? What if you if they say, you know, your name, what's what's the link? What's that hook? Um, and of course, we do so many things. We wear lots of hats and all of that. 
but ultimately we've got lots of things going in our brains and we don't take everything in so what would be the one thing you'd want to be known for initially that gets you in the door that makes and builds those connections and you know for me i think it's a really great way of also building up your own personal network it, it um, brings in new contacts and they can then obviously in time uh, lead to potential clients because you're then nurturing them hopefully you'll have some sort of way of keeping in touch and all of that but it's just a really great way to build that up and that's my talk so uh, just uh in terms of a call to action i've got a free facebook group it's called lovely canva crew um i share free tips on branding design in canva so you're very welcome to join me over there please make sure to answer the question so that you know i can uh, allow you into the group uh, so although it's a big group it is a safe space um, and a real community and, um, you know, there's lots of ways we can work together, um, but in terms of, um, you know, what's what sort of uh, next, um, just sort of interested to know what questions you might have. So that's my uh, talk. I shall end the screen. There we go. And see all your beautiful faces. I'll just does end the recording and then <laughs> we can go into questions. <laughs> so does anyone have any